Hey there! In this video we're gonna take a look at three pretty quick and pretty easy ways to stretch your watercolor paper. Uh, two ways are pretty fast, pretty expedient, and the third way is actually the most reliable in terms of getting your paper to lay flat and stay flat while you're painting on it and actually be flat at the end of your painting. Uh, regardless of the method, you don't need a whole lot of tools. Um, you're going to need to get your paper wet, you're going to need a big brush. If you can't soak the paper in a bathtub or something like that, you're going to need a big brush like this, two inch flat, to soak the paper really, really well. You're going to need some artist tape to hold, help hold the paper down. And then I'm using gator board as my support. And if you're using something like gator board, something soft like that, that'll accept staples, you can use staples to actually to hold the paper down onto the board. And that's what I'm using. So we're going to take a look at all three of those methods in this video, so let's take a look now. So the first step in stretching paper is to soak it in water. In this case I've got it in a bathtub with just a little bit of water in the tub, just enough to cover the paper. Uh, and this step it really is designed to get the paper to absorb as much water as possible, meaning that it'll expand as much as possible and then we can tack it down uh, so that it'll stretch itself out basically when it tries to when it dries out so let's get it soaking I'll let it sit for a few minutes just so it completely saturates and then we'll go to the next step I find the most reliable method to get paper stretched and to stay flat when you're painting is to soak it in the tub like we're doing there and to then tack the edges down to a board with something like staples. Um, I use regular staples. I use a stapler that opens completely like this one does so that I can get it down to the edges of the paper without any trouble. And then I'm using gator board. I use gator board to support my paper. Whether I'm stretching it or not, I use gator board. Um, and if you're going to use it to stretch, the nice thing about gator board is that it will hold those staples really well along the edges and we'll do that in just a second. So I've had my paper actually soaking for a little bit. I'm going to pull it out now. It should be completely, uh, it should have completely absorbed all the water that it's going to, meaning that it has expanded completely. And I'm going to get it out. I am going to hold it up just a little bit. Let some of that excess water run off. I'll hold it until it stops dripping. And then I'm going to lay it on my gator board. So I'll put it out here on the gator board. I do try to flatten it out. I'm doing it with my hand. You can do it with a sponge or a rag, but uh, whatever you want, whatever you do to sort of uh, flatten out the paper, make sure it's clean. Otherwise, otherwise, like it did there, it'll leave a little bit of a mark on the paper. That shouldn't hurt anything. But it's best to avoid that. And then we'll start stapling. Um, I start at one corner. Get my stapler ready. I start at one corner and I work along the edge. And I go every couple inches I put in a staple. I stay fairly close to the edge of the paper, but you want to be in there at least about a quarter of an inch, about an eighth, I should say an eighth of an inch, uh, just because if you're too close to this edge, when the paper contracts, when it dries, it, it can sometimes pull through uh, the staple itself. So I've worked around one edge. I'm going to continue around doing the same thing again every couple inches. And if you happen to have that happen where a staple doesn't really go in quite right, like that one right there, just pull it out and you can do it again. So I'll continue around and we'll finish up. So my paper has now been soaked so it's completely saturated. It's been laid on my gator board and where I've tacked it down at the edges I've used uh, regular staples that uh, will actually tack right into the gator board and the gator board will hold on to those. So now I'm going to set the board aside. We're going to let it dry. As it dries what happens is the paper tries to contract again. As it dries the fibers try to contract because they no longer have water in them. And they're unable to do that because the edges are tacked down. So it'll dry essentially in the size that it is when it's fully soaking wet and that'll keep it from buckling when I paint on it the next time. So let's set that aside to dry and then we'll come back and 
take a look at just finishing up the edges before we paint. Um, one, it gives me a nice little, when I lift the tape uh, at the end of the painting, it'll give me a nice little border around the painting itself, which helps it stand out. It's kind of like putting a mat on it so you can take a good look at it. Uh, but the other thing is it sort of uh, keeps you from accidentally pulling one of the staples out uh, while you're painting. Not that that's a big deal, I, uh, that one of the staples might be missing. It's that, you know, you accidentally grab it, it gets picked up, and maybe it gets dragged along the paper and damages the paper, which is really the reason I wouldn't want to uh, have that happen. So those are the two reasons that I do it. Again, this step is... not necessary for uh, stretching your paper with using staples. So anyway, then uh, that finishes it up. The board's ready to go. Uh, whenever I want to pick it up and use it, I sometimes have a stack of these actually ready to go in the studio so that I can just pick it up and start painting. A uh, good way to go. Anyway, that's a, really the easy way to sort of uh, stretch this paper, hold it, hold down the edges with the with the uh, staples, and make it nice and tight, and stay actually nice and tight while you're doing your painting. Now, another way to stretch your paper, which is perhaps not as reliable as stretching completely, stretching and tacking down with staples or something at the edge, is this method. It does tack down all the edges, but we'll use artist tape for that. You do want to be careful about this, uh, the tape that you use. People, I've seen people use masking tape, for instance, and drafting tape. Uh, both of those actually have acid material in them, and the acid will transfer to the paper, at least at the edges, and can damage the paper and actually perhaps eventually damage your painting. So you'll want to use artist tape. That's what this is. Uh, it is acid-free. It's nice and sticky, but it, it's acid-free and it'll work fairly well. So if you're going to do this method, I recommend using the artist tape. What we're going to do here is not soak the paper completely. That is, we're not going to soak both sides. What we're going to do is soak the back side of the paper with uh, plenty of water. I've got a big two-inch brush here, which I'll use to uh, get that clear water on the back, just, in this case, just the back of the paper. Now you can, you might be able to see that there's a little bit of color in that water. It's not a exactly clean and it's okay because we're just doing the back although it would probably have been better to have absolutely clean water which is what I thought I had but I don't but we're gonna get plenty of water on the back of this piece of paper we're gonna flip it over onto our board in this case it's gator board again I'm gonna sort of line it up the way I'd like it to be placed on the paper I'm gonna get um, this is a nice touch actually. I'm going to get some water actually on the board itself. Uh, that helps the back stay nice and wet and it helps it um, expand. What's going to happen here is the fibers, at least on the back of the paper, will expand a bit. You can see it's happening already. Uh, you might be able to see the top edge is curling. You can see that and actually so is the bottom edge. It's curling because it, the paper is expanding. On the back side the paper is expanding and that uh, is uh, what we want to happen. So we're going to let that happen a little bit more. You can actually help it by from time to time picking up the paper. If you manage to get a little bit of the water on the front, you can just blot it up with a brush. You could do it with a rag. I'm afraid to do it with this rag because it and that'll actually help the paper expand the way it needs to expand. We're going to let that Go for a couple minutes and then we'll tape down the edges. So I've let that paper sit again for about a, another minute. Uh, I did pick it up a couple times like this to help it expand. You can see it has really curled up both at the bottom and the top. And that means that the paper has really expanded on the back. So the next thing we want to do actually in this method is to tape down these edges. To do that you want to make sure that the board around the edges is quite dry so that the tape will stick. Uh, 
So you'll want to take a rag and really run that right around those edges so the tape will stick nicely to the paper and to the board. And then with your artist tape and a pair of scissors, or in my case actually I use a utility knife like this, um, we're going to put out, actually I'm going to tape down this top edge. I overlap it by a, about an eighth of an inch. I overlap the paper by about an eighth of an inch. And then I press, press the tape down and I slid it and tape it down. Now, if the board is wet, that tape won't hold. In fact, it looked like it wasn't, but I think it will now. I'm going to go around with the rag again, just to make sure. And then I'll start putting tape down both sides. And again, I overlap the paper by about an eighth of an inch. We'll do the bottom edge. And this one last side right over here. So now, now the paper is, has been stretched, it's taped down, and actually we could jump right in and paint on this right away if we wanted to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I would actually probably let this dry again a little bit. Um, but we're really ready to go. So if you're not in the studio, if you're outdoors painting and you uh, can't really sit down and soak your paper and then tack it down with staples, that's fine. You can actually use this method. It does work pretty well. Occasionally you'll still get a little bit of a bubble or a buckle in there, but usually it's not too bad and it'll work okay. So you can give this method a try, particularly if you're on the go. Another method of, of stretching your paper uh, is really just to wet it, actually both sides, and then clamp it down using uh, either little clamps like this or bulldog clips like that, uh, clamp it into your paper. It's not really as effective as either the other two methods that we've seen, uh, but it does work in a pinch, and you, you can paint successfully this way. There's a number of uh, watercolor painters that this is the way they do it. Um, as you're painting on this kind of stretched paper, you will, for time to, from time to time, probably have to lift up your clamps and sort of re-stretch an edge and then clamp it right back down. Uh, but this method really involves, again, just uh, getting clean water and soaking both the back and the front, in this case. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, I've got a big brush here. I'm going to soak the back really, really well. I'm going to flip it over, but the other thing I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to soak the board really well too. If I get water on the board, what it'll do is it'll help that back stay wet and soaked, and it'll, it'll should keep dry spots from occurring on the back of the paper. If you do get a dry spot, you'll get a bubble, and we might get one, and if we do, I'll point that out. Uh, and once you have that down, you can, um, I'm going to pick up some water here, and I've got clean water. I must have some paint in the brush because I see a little bit of color in that water. So, all right, so now I'm going to put my water on the front. So in this case, we're soaking both sides of the paper. So that it'll stretch. Now there's a little bit of friction between the paper and the board on the back, so from time to time you're going to want to pick up that paper, uh, free it from, from that backing board and, and you know, let it stretch. That's really what the objective is. And you should let this soak for a while. Once you've got all that water on the paper and on the board underneath, you're really going to, going to want to let this stretch for probably five minutes. It takes a while to get this to stretch out when it's not soaking in a tub of water. Um, it takes longer for the paper actually to stretch itself out. So uh, let's let it do that for a few minutes and then we'll come back and uh, 
clamp it down. Now that I've let my paper soak for several minutes, um, I've picked it up by the corners and let it really, really expand. I'm ready to clamp it down. And again, with this method, all we're going to use is clamps. Um, bulldog clips work pretty well. Um, so do these little spring clips. Uh, they don't take up as quite as much space at the edge, uh, and they hold down very well. Either one that you use is fine. You're going to want to clamp down all four corners. And let me just put a bulldog clip up here. So you'll clamp down all four corners and you can start painting. One of the great things really about this particular method is that if you're inclined to paint wet and wet initially, you can jump right in. The paper is already wet, soaking wet. You can jump in with your wet and wet painting right away. So that's one of the good things about this method. And again, as you're working along with your paper cl clipped this way, you may find that you'll get some buckles and bubbles in the paper. I don't have one right now, but um, if that happens, you can lift up one of the clips, sort of pull that corner out again, and then clamp it back down. And that'll help stretch it out. Uh, this is not as likely to stay as flat as the other two methods are, but it will work again in a pinch uh, for a really quick stretch, and particularly if you're starting out with a wet and wet application, this works very well. And then the one last thing actually I would point out, if you're using particularly bulldog clips, it is probably going to put impressions at the corners of the paper where the clip is. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it will essentially make that part of the paper uh, not something you're, you're going to want to see. So whatever you, even if you paint down there, you're going to end up having to mat over those particular edges. This one is the same way, if you can see it right there. So that's a drawback of this. But anyway, it does work. It's not a bad method, uh, and it's quick and fast, and it'll allow you to jump right into the painting pretty quickly.